I'm the calculus professor and today I'll be talking to you about volume by cylindrical shells. Welcome back. Today we'll be talking about section 6.4, volume by shells. And we're going to start with problem number five that says use the shell method to find the volume of the solid formed when the region bounded by y equals x minus x squared and y equals zero is revolved about the y-axis. And you'll notice that I drew the little region in already right here. Here's our parabola y equals x minus x squared. Uh, y equals zero is the x-axis, and so we have this region that's trapped in between. Now, when we go ahead and spin that region about the y-axis, uh, we get this shape um, that would look something like maybe um, something like a bunt cake maybe. Uh, so you can kind of see it right here. There's like kind of a little tornado cut out of the middle of this thing. And uh, it looks something like a bunt cake. Okay, so that's the region that we're trying to find the volume of in this problem. Uh, let's go ahead and do it. We're using the shell method. And we can see right now uh, what we want to do to use the shell method is we're cutting we're making our cuts along the x-axis, and once we make a cut, we spin that cut, and you can see that we get a cylinder when we spin one cut. So uh, the formula that we'll be using is that volume is in the integral from a to b of 2 pi r h dx. Okay, so this is what we have to remember when we're using the shell method is 2 pi rh dx is what we integrate from a to b. And again, a to b is asking where do I start cutting these rectangles or these line segments that I spin to form these shells. And I can see here I start cutting and I stop cutting. So I start cutting at zero, I stop cutting when I get to one. So in this particular case, I'm gonna start at zero, end at one, two pi is in there. R is talking about, okay, if I'm over here at a point X, then how far is it from that point X to the center of my cylindrical shell or my cylinder. And you can see that how far it is to the center is exactly x. So the radius in this case is just x. And then the height of that cylinder is the functional value. So the height of my cylinder is x minus x squared. So let's write that in. x minus x squared dx. And so what I end up with is I pull out the 2 pi I've got integral from zero to one of, I pulled out the two pi already, let's multiply the x through. So I get x squared minus x cubed dx. All right, now we're ready to take an antiderivative. I still have two pi. The antiderivative of x squared is one third x cubed. The antiderivative of negative x cubed is negative one fourth x to the fourth evaluated from 0 to 1. Now I plug in the 1 and the 0 and I get that this is equal to 2 pi times, I plug in 1 and I get 1 third, I plug in 1 and I get minus 1 fourth, and then if I plugged in 0 I would just get zeros, so we're done. Uh, now we just need to simplify this a little bit. A third minus a fourth is the same as 4 twelfths minus 3 twelfths, which means that's 1 twelfth, or this is 2 pi times 1 twelfth, or if you prefer, this is pi divided by 6. So pi over 6 is the volume that I get 
by taking this parabolic shape and spinning it around the y-axis.